Hi guys, it's Stock Curry, and in today's video, I've got major news that's going to have huge implications for the stock market. We're also going to go over some short squeeze plays, including AMC, GME, and MULN. So let's get into it! Okay, first up, the bond market is flashing a warning sign for a recession that may be coming soon. The reason is because of this thing called an inverted yield curve. When the two-year versus 10-year yield curve inverts, going all the way back to 1955, that has 100% of the time been an indicator that a recession is coming sometime in the next 7 to 18 months. Now, in this particular case, the two-year and 10-year yield curve is not inverted yet, but something else has. The five-year and 30-year Treasury yields inverted for the first time since 2006. That's right. It is the first inversion since the 2008 financial crisis. This is a major warning sign for the stock market. But don't worry, it's not all bad news yet. I'm going to explain in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at that critical two-year and 10-year yield curve. The two-year and 10-year yield curve has not yet inverted. An inversion is whenever the yield curve drops below zero. Now, it did hit the lowest level in years today at 0.11, but it is not yet dropped below zero. It is not yet inverted. As I've been saying for weeks now, this should avert sometime in the first week of April, and it is on track to do that. Now, when it does invert, that means that a recession will come sometime between, generally speaking, about the end of this year to the end of next year. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on this. I've been predicting somewhere between April and October of 2023 for a recession, uh, but it may come a little bit sooner than that. We'll just have to keep our eyes on it. Now, why do I say this is actually not bad news for the stock market yet? I mean, a recession sounds pretty bad, right? And yeah, it is. But here's the funny thing about the way the stock market reacts to recessions. First of all, we're not even going to know that we're in a recession until we've already been in one for six months. And the reason for that is because the way a recession is defined. A recession is defined as two quarters in a row of negative GDP growth. Now, a quarter is every three months, so two quarters would be six months. So we actually have to be in a recession for six months before we even know that we're in a recession. Now, here's what's interesting about that. Generally speaking, the Federal Reserve will continue to raise interest rates until we know that we're in a recession which means the Federal Reserve will most likely raise interest rates until we're about six months into a recession and we get the official recession data. Now, when that happens, the Federal Reserve almost always will immediately stop raising interest rates and they'll actually start lowering interest rates. When that happens, the stock market will react very favorably. So what does this mean? It means that we will probably see some downward pressure on the stock market market overall, at least until we are officially in a recession, that is when we've been in a recession for six months. So the moment that we immediately know we're in a recession, the stock market will immediately stop falling. It will immediately turn around and start going back up because that's the point at which the Fed will say, oops, we are in trouble here. The Fed will immediately stop raising interest rates and they'll revert and they'll start lowering interest rates once again. So whenever the six-month point of the recession happens, whether it happens towards the end of 2023, beginning of 2024, whenever that point happens, that is where the stock market will bottom out and start going back up. Now, why do I say this is not bad news yet? Well, the reason is because even though a recession happens 100% of the time after the yield curve inverts, it takes time, right? It takes anywhere from, you know, seven to you know, 18 months before the recession actually starts. So the important thing to look at here is that it's going to be a while. And while we wait, the stock market could very well go up. In fact, there have been a number of times in prior uh, points where the yield curve inverted where the stock market actually rose to new all-time highs before we actually entered a recession. Now, I don't think we're going to get to new all-time highs yet. I think there's plenty of downward pressure to push the stock market down. Uh, right now, the stock market looks like it's a little bit overbought. 
But since we did just jump above the 50% Fibonacci retracement level, I do think we're going to get up to the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. And that key 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level is where pretty much all retracements get up to, where they just hit a hard stop and then they start going back down. Now, if we look at QQQ, that level is $371. So my prediction now is going to be that the NASDAQ will probably rise up to $371 before topping out and then going back down. So that's my prediction. That's where I think we're going to be. Um, I did open up another trade in the uh, VIP Discord today. I also alerted on Twitter that I did open up a position that will make money if the QQQ, that is a NASDAQ 100 ETF, rises up to $371 this week. Actually, it'll make money even if we rise up a little bit. It just got to get above $366 for me to make money. I'll double my money if the NASDAQ gets or the QQQ gets above $366 this week, I'll double my money. So I actually alerted that in the VIP Discord. By the way, you guys, if you want to know everything I buy and sell, I post all of my trades before they're filled, even when I'm just thinking about placing the orders, in the VIP Discord. If you guys want to sign up, you can sign up at stockcurry.vip slash getvip. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the U.S. 10-year Treasury. Let's see where that's at today. And we can see that as of the recording of this video, it is at 2.453%. Now, it did actually rise above 2.5% earlier today. 2.5% is a pretty significant level, although a lot of people think we're going to hit 3% very quickly here. And just taking a quick look at oil, oil was down about another 2% on Monday. Uh, got down to about a, just under $111. So oil is now falling a little bit, so that's another good sign for the stock market as well. And as oil prices continue to fall, that could push the stock market up. All right, now let's talk about some short squeeze potential stocks, including AMC, GME, and MULN. We're going to take a look at Ortex. We're going to see where the short interest currently is. We're going to take a look at utilization, and I'll explain all that in just a minute here. And so let's go ahead and get into those right now. Okay, first up, let's talk about AMC. AMC was up a massive 45% on Monday. You heard that right, 45% gain in one day. Now the question is, has AMC short squeezed? I talked a few days ago about how in order for AMC to short squeeze, it would have to get up to $29. And the reason for that is because $29 is the average price that short sellers shorted the stock at. Meaning once AMC gets above $29, short sellers on average, meaning more than 50% of them, will be losing money. And at that point, they will start to capitulate, meaning they will start to cover or buy back shares at a loss. Now, has that happened yet? Have short sellers started to buy back? Because we're at $29. Well, let's go take a look at Ortex and see what short sellers are doing. Now, the key metric that we're going to be taking a look at here is not the short interest percent of free float, what's normally known as this 20, 21% short interest. Believe it or not, that really doesn't matter. This is not a very important number. We're also not going to take a look at the free float percent on loan because, again, that doesn't really matter either. What matters is this number over here, this utilization. Utilization is at 100%. Now what I did over here on the chart is I've actually got utilization highlighted in this orange bar here. And as you can see, utilization hit 100% all the way back in February 8th, or about two months ago. And utilization has been pinned at 100% ever since then. Meaning short sellers have shorted every single share available to borrow since February 8th. There has not been a single new short since February 8th. Now, because of that, if we were going to see a short squeeze, what we would see is something like we saw over here, where the utilization will start to drop. This would happen if we were getting a short squeeze. But do we see any drop at all? No, no, we do not. We remain at 100% utilization. What that means is the short squeeze has not even started to happen yet. This 45% run up on AMC today was 100% retail traders buying. That's it. There was nothing else. It was just 
retail traders buying. And so the short squeeze has not even started. Now we might see short squeeze start to happen tomorrow, but believe me, it has not even started. This is massive. This is crazy. This is insane. Now here's the other thing. Look at the days to cover. This is based upon the average volume. How many days of the price going up would it take to cover if people started to buy back their shares if a short squeeze happened? It means a short squeeze would take on average three days. So if AMC were to go up 50% for the next three days, let's go take a look at the price and see what would happen. So just to make the math easy, we're going to assume AMC is at $30 right now. So a 50% gain on Tuesday would put us at $45. Another 50% gain on Wednesday would put us at $67.50. And another 50% gain on Thursday would put us at $101.25. So if AMC were to short squeeze and it were to go up 50% for the next three days, again, three days to cover, AMC would hit $101.25. So let's be realistic here. A short squeeze would send AMC to $100. It's not going to go to $1,000. It's not going to go to $100,000. A hundred dollars. That's where AMC will go. It will get to a hundred dollars if it short squeezes. So don't listen to all these guys just hyping it up and being ridiculous and telling you it's going to go to some insane number. A hundred dollars is where it will go if it short squeezes. But again, I want to be very clear. It has not short squeezed yet. It's not even started to short squeeze yet. This has a ton of upward movement, but retail traders have to buy more shares if it's going to short squeeze. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. All right, now let's move on to GME. This is GameStop, and GME was up 25% today, which is really impressive considering how expensive this stock is. So once again, has GME short squeezed or has this short squeeze started on GME? Well, let's go take a look at Ortex and see what it says. Well, this chart looks familiar. Take a look at the utilization. 100% utilization going all the way back to February 8th, the exact same day as AMC. So has GME short squeezed? No. Shorts maxed out their short positions back two months ago, and they have not covered a single share. This is not short squeeze. It's not even close to short squeezing. But if GME can continue to rise in price, then yes, it will short squeeze. But has it started yet? Nope, not at all. Not even close. Now take a look at this. The days to cover on GME are just under six. We'll just call it six days to cover. Now, based upon a 25% per day gain, let's see what would happen of six days of 25% gains. Let's go pull up our calculator again. All right, to make the math easy, we're going to assume the game stops at $190. So 190, we're going to do six days of 25% uh, gains. So 190, let's go Tuesday, we're at that. Let's go Wednesday, let's go Thursday, let's go Friday, let's go Monday. Uh, what are we at? One, two, three, four, five, and six would be uh, Tuesday of next week. We are at $725. So GameStop, if it were to short squeeze, could get to $725 by the time it's done short squeezing. Now, has the short squeeze started yet? Nope, not at all. And so if GME is going to short squeeze, retail investors are going to have to buy a lot more shares and push the price up a lot higher than where it's at right now. But once they do and it does short to start to short squeeze, we can see GameStop getting up to about $725 at its top. All right, the last stock we're going to take a look at is MULN. This is Mullen Automotive. Now, MULN is a little bit different story because while it was a potential short squeeze stock, and actually last week it was really looking like it was going to short squeeze, unlike AMC and GME, MULN has continued to drop. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Now, MULN was up 4% during the day, another 2%, almost 3% after hours. But if we zoom in on the candlestick here, you can see how it's really been dropping. It has not been rising like AMC and GME have. So let's go take a look at Ortex and see what happened on MULN. 
Now, if we take a look at the utilization on MULN, it is at 100%, just like AMC and GME are, but you'll notice that the chart does not look the same. In fact, if we take a look at the chart, we remember how last week this was running up like this. Well, what happened when it ran up? Well, shorts started to cover. In fact, on this day right here, we actually started a short squeeze. We went from 100% utilization down to 78% utilization. This was a short squeeze. The short squeeze started and then it uh, faded. It stopped. And why? Why did the short squeeze stop? Well, it's because shorts re-shorted the stock. While the short squeeze started on Monday, March 21st, by Tuesday of last week, shorts decided to reshort MULN and they have now fully reshorted it. They are back to 100% utilization on MULN. Now, on one hand, that's good news because it means the downward pressure on the share price can no longer continue. So now that shorts are no longer able to push the stock down anymore, retail investors are now able to push the stock price back up. But MULN has another problem. And the problem with MULN is the days to cover, which unfortunately are at a mere 0.35. Meaning if MULN had a full short squeeze, it would barely rise 10%. So MULN unfortunately just does not have the short squeeze potential that AMC and GME have. That said, do I think shorts would cover at this point? No, I do not, especially since they just reshorted the stock at just over $3 per share. In order for MULN to start a short squeeze, it would have to get up to well above $3 per share, probably around $3.50 before a short squeeze would even start. And then at that point, I think we could see it top out at around $4. I don't think this would get much above $4, maybe $4.50, just depends upon how much retail buying there was. But with a days to cover of 0.35, this is not actually that great of a short squeeze potential. AMC and GME are far better short squeeze potentials than MULN is. Now, the next stock I want to talk about is a little bit different, and this is ZIM, or Zim Integrated Shipping Services. So we take a look at ZIM here, and we take a look at the chart on the utilization. We can see that as ZIM started to run up, the short interest really jumped in, and then as it fell back down, short sellers got out. So they basically made a quick profit from here to here. Short sellers completely pushed the stock back down. Now, a lot of the reason for that was not your typical short squeeze. It had to do with the dividends. Last week on March 21st, ZIM gave a $17 per share dividend. And the ex-dividend date was March 21st, meaning you had to be holding the shares prior to March 21st in order to get payment of this dividend. Now, at $17, it's almost guaranteed that ZIM is going to drop $17 after the ex-dividend date because people will just basically buy the shares wanting to grab a hold of that dividend. And then as soon as the dividend is paid out, they're immediately going to sell. And so it's pretty much expected that ZIM would drop by $17 on the active date or March 21st. And so short sellers will actually take advantage of that. They will short the shares uh, going into March 21st. And then on March 21st, when the stock drops, they will cover their shares and get out. So not your typical short squeeze. It actually had everything to do with the dividend and short sellers jumping in in order to make a big profit on the downfall of the stock price as it fell on the ex-div date. And of course, we saw that here where ZIM ran up going into that massive dividend and it closed here on March 21st at $88 and the very next day it opened at $74. Now, if you do that math, 88 minus 74, it's a $14 difference. Not quite $17, but pretty close. So short sellers were shorting the stock up in here, getting ready for a massive drop uh, ex-div, and the stock dropped $14, or about 20%. So short sellers who shorted here made about a 20% profit after the ex-div date on ZIM. So that's all that was. It was just a quick profit. Now, uh, last week, I actually covered ZIM, and I said ZIM would have a buy under price of $70 with an ideal buying price of $65. Now, we didn't quite get down to that $65 level, but we did drop below $70, and a few people in the VIP Discord, I alerted that it was below the buy under price and it would be a good time to buy in, and quite a few people did, and I'm sure they're pretty happy because ZIM was up 5% today, and it continues to rise, and I think it will continue to rise. And let me go over to tip ranks and show 
show you what tip ranks uh, analysts have to say about where they see ZIM going over the next year or so. So if we take a look at tip ranks, the average analyst one-year price target is $100, which is a 38% upside from Monday's closing price. If you imagine in a bear market making a 38% profit, I mean, that's just incredible. So in my mind, ZIM is a buy. And I think these price target, the average price target of around $100 is actually probably pretty accurate. Now, regarding the dividend, the big question here is, will ZIM continue to pay out a $17 dividend every quarter? Because, I mean, let's face it, a 31% dividend yield is really impressive. I don't know of any stocks that pay a 31% dividend yield outside of ZIM. Now, here's the beautiful thing about tip ranks. is On tip ranks, you can go over to the dividends tab here, and you can actually see the payout ratio, and you'll see it's 55.04%. Meaning, on average, ZIM does not pay out quarterly, they pay out semi-annually. So the point here is that on average, you can expect to get this $17 dividend twice a year. Now, $34 a year is really, really impressive on a stock that's currently trading at $75. I mean, that's almost 50%. So would I be buying a ZIM? Absolutely. If nothing else for the massive dividend yields, and on top of that, the stock is bullish with a $100 one-year price target for another 38% upside potential. So between the dividend and the upside potential, you could potentially make a 50% profit on ZIM this year, even though we're in a bear market. So ZIM is a huge buy in my mind. By the way, if you want access to all of these analyst rankings that TipRanks offers and the dividend information and all the other tools they have, the stock analysis, the insider trading, the new sentiment, the crowd wisdom, earnings, all this stuff, TipRanks is currently offering a special. They are having their largest sale ever this week. It's 30% off. So if you want to take advantage of that and sign up for TipRanks, it's 30% off, but it's only good through the end of this month. If you're interested in that, I do have a link for that 30% off discount coupon code in the description of this video. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got a lot out of it. Comment down below what you're buying on Tuesday. And again, if you want to join the VIP Discord to get all my trade alerts before I even place the trade so you can jump in on my trades too, you can sign up at stockcurry.vip slash getvip. We had an amazing time with our coaching session today. We went over candlestick patterns, which is something I've never even discussed here on YouTube before. But we taught on candlestick patterns today. We taught about how to spot reversal patterns using the candlesticks. It was great training. A lot of people got a lot out of it. So if you want to get some coaching there too, you can sign up at stockcarry.vib slash get VIP. All right. I also wanted to let you know that if you sign up for that Weeble promotion where you get five free stocks worth up to $9,600, don't forget you have to deposit at least $1 before the end of this month. If you don't deposit at least $1 before the end of this month, you will not get your free stocks. Now, if you haven't signed up yet, you might have enough time if you sign up right now to use my link in the description below, sign up for Weeble, and you'll get five free stocks worth up to $9,600. But again, you got to sign up using my link below, and you've got to deposit at least $1 before the end of this month. Otherwise, you will miss out. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you have a lot of success trading. I will see you tomorrow.